Alrighty guys, thanks for tuning in to Deuces Wild Channel. <clears throat> got, got to a swap meet today at one of my local hobby stores. <clears throat> Expecting to see, you know, people selling their RC planes and stuff, but all they had was static models. Pretty much 98% of their stuff was static models with some old RC stuff that I wasn't even interested in that people had like home built stuff and I really didn't see anything that knocked me over the head but they happen to have one of these upstairs they're pulling their swap meet downstairs and uh <clears throat> but so I went back up into the store and they had one of these so I was like yeah you know my buddy Derek's got one and I like the way it flies so I decided decided to pick myself one up while I was there I also got one of these cool little things I can terrorize my dogs with. It's a little RC tank. Uh, so I'll see how that, how much fun I'll have with this little guy. It has about 10 minutes of play time on it. So we'll play with that another time. But anyway, here it is RV7. I, we did inspect it at the store, make sure everything looked good. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox it and see just how easy this is to put together. Everybody here is telling me it's literally a matter of seconds, or sorry, minutes, to put this thing together. So maybe five, ten minutes. I'm gonna spend more time setting up the radio than I will be putting this plane together. So uh, let's get her out and have a look. See at the E-Flight brand new RV7 that I've been seen it on back order a lot of uh, are on Horizon Hobbies website and uh, but I've been seeing it in the uh, sort of on a newly I think they released the plug and play on the website but this is the bind and fly <clears throat> and I'm the kind of guy that never ever does pre-orders I'll wait till they come out on the market before I mess around with uh, buying one so Broke the tape. Yeah, we did break the tape seal on it, but I guess it's decided to stick again. There we go. Three. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> oh yeah, today's unboxing brought to you by the Spider Co. Tenacious, good and expensive budget knife. One of many in my collection. All right. So right off the top, falling out. Your hardware packet, not very much there. Three blade prop, looks very similar to the one on my SR22. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and put that down there. Of course we got the manual. Might as well get that untaped. Out and ready. Because I will be setting it up by the book. <clears throat> Except I was made aware by Derek Aquino that it says negative and two and plus two on your elevator flat mix. He said don't go with that, just go two and four, two percent half and four percent full flaps of down elevator mix. Mm -hmm. So that's what we'll be doing for the flap to elevator mix when we go to do that. And here is the wing. And uh this plane has some really nice forward-facing landing lights that are really easy to see coming at you. And then on the wingtips, the nav lights you can see coming towards you as well as going uh, across in front of you. So very visible plane in the air. Um, the lights stand out really good even in broad daylight from what I noticed on his. So I'm sure I'm going to love this one. It's going to be the same. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get it all out and ready. Out with the fuse. If I can do this carefully. And look at that. The buddy, the pilot looks like my buddy uh, Sean that I fly with. Pretty similar to him. <laughs> I'm sure you'll appreciate that, right, Sean? So, yeah. 
and looks pretty good. Fuse looks pretty good. Got little tiny crinkles in the paint, but you know, it's hard to get a foamy that's absolutely perfect, but this one's in good shape, so. Um, and then these things are kind of hard to get right now, so I'm not gonna complain about a little imperfection. I've been in this hobby for so many years that I've just come to expect imperfections in foam aircraft. And, uh, that way my, I'm pleasantly surprised when they do turn out really nice. Here are the landing gear. Let's see if I can put these over here. These out of the way. Elevator halves. Okay. Those out of the way. Start as far. Get all this ready. I like to put the uh, foam box pieces back in the way they came so that if I were to ever sell it or what have you, um, I have everything I need to put it back in the box. If I can just remember how this went, there we go. Move over the top. I do save my boxes. I know it's kind of, some people probably don't like to do that. When I give a plane away or I sell a plane, I'll uh, I always like to give the box that I came in with to the, the new owner and they're, I'm sure they're appreciative of it. Oops, you know, I forgot one piece. I forgot this piece on the top. So this way. There. Now we can get busy with uh, the build. Bring everything in. Move the thing to the inside here. Little carbon spot. There we go. All right. So. Plug in wing. All your plugs are right on the wing. Nothing to think about, nothing to worry about. Um, you just run your screws in, bolt it in, and then do your radio programming. Hook up your elevator. There's not really not that much to do on this plane, so let's go ahead and start with the wing assembly. Bam, that was like nothing. That was like nothing to do. Find the four screws, get them going. Take the two elevator halves right here. Man, this is like stupid simple, guys. And it is a bolt-on motor shaft. I'm not a big fan of the compression collet fit. They're okay, but they have been known to come loose. If you don't sand them down and roughen them up and snug them really good, and if you miss a beat on that, man, they will, they can and will uh, fail on you. So don't want that. I had it happen to me on my Carbon Z Yak 54 once, and it wasn't pretty. Uh, I'm gonna put my one and a half. So let me see. Oh, I'm gonna need my MIP driver set. If you don't have any of these, these are a must-have in your RC arsenal. They make working on RC cars a whole lot easier, as well as planes, but definitely RC cars. Let's see what these are for the wing bolts. Okay, they're two millimeters. They're all the same length, so... You got four longs and four shorts. The four shorts are going to be for your landing gear the four longs are for your main wing bolts and then you've got two black uh, coarse thread screws countersunk flatheads for your elevator halves so let's see eight nine ten screws and you're in business So we're going to bolt the wing on, we're going to bolt the landing gear on, and then we're going to put the elevator halves on. Make sure we got a good purchase on that. Yep, feels good. I don't want to over 
tighten anything. Just snug it up good. All your control horn or all your linkages, all your flaps and ailerons are already hooked up. Making it a lot nicer. I would have some background music, guys, like I usually like to do in my videos, but the last one I did, uh, I got a copyright warning, even though the music was playing low. Yeah, a lot, a lot of our liberties and freedoms are being taken away from us. Slowly but surely. Not good. All right. We got the little steps here. These are the little tidbits. These are obviously our landing gear for our landing gear. Okay, these little plastic bits that fit over your lock your landing gear and it has radius corners on one end and sharp corners on the other end. You can clearly see the way they're supposed to go in there. So they kind of make it idiot proof, which is nice. Again, two millimeter MIP driver. Super simple. The landing gear come in two separate pieces instead of one whole piece like a Valiant or the, I don't remember if my SR-22 was like that. It's been a while since I, since I put that thing together. It goes in just like that. I'm not sure if you guys are getting this good on the camera or not. Sit all the way down in there. There we go. Make sure these are good and snug. You could put a little drop of blue Loctite on there, which I might go back and do later, but for video purposes, we're just going to put this thing together the way it is out of the box, but anytime you've got brass thread inserts and machine thread screws, always a good idea to put just a little bit of blue Loctite just to give it that extra insurance so that nothing comes loose. All right, let's move on to the elevator halves and see, uh, see how easy that is. One carbon spar. There's the left half, here's the right half. Now these two key in together with a little square X doodad there that locks in the, the other half. And it lines up beautifully. You get one side is in. Spars all over. Oh, that's nice. The carbon spar tube, instead of just going straight into foam, they actually have a female tube for it to slide into. Also, it looks like it's made out of, of uh, carbon fiber, so that's a nice touch. Makes it that much more rigid and secure. All right, that's all keyed in real nice, super simple. Now we're gonna switch over to a little Phillips head screwdriver. So all of these for the wing and the landing gear are all two millimeter hex, and then uh, the elevator is just a regular Phillips. Now, before I hook the linkage up on the elevator, I'm going to set my radio up. Make sure the uh, the trim tab, the trims, everything, everything's neutral on the trim, and then I'll mechanically zero it out on the plane. And then we'll play around with the flap elevator. 
mix. So, boy, that was easy, guys. There's some other little bits that come with this plane for the little steps on the sides. I'm probably going to leave them off for right now. Uh, you know what? I need to look and see what the... Uh, I'm not going to put the prop on until the end, but I want to look and see what the connector is here. Oh, it's that IC3 connector, which is basically the same thing as an EC3, but for smart batteries. I don't do smart batteries. I'm a dummy. I don't do smart stuff. Let me see here. Hmm. Let me see if I can find one of mine that has a little bit more juice than 380. So we can I was flying yesterday yeah yesterday or sorry the day before yesterday I was flying my zero and I was using these 2400 or 2500 4s lipos here we go this one's got so this one's got what I need try my adapter Where's my adapter? Oh, you know what? Give me a second, guys. Bear with me. I've got that adapter, I think. And my radian, I do. Okay. The adapter was in my radian for this one, so... <clears throat> I'm going to get this all... I'm just going to throw the battery in here. So, this is they put a decent quality Velcro strap in here. That's good. So now comes the radio part. Watch how easy this is. All right. Add new model. Create. Yes. Um, I'll select. Uh, model type, airplane, yep. Model name. We're just going to call it the RB7 because that's what it is. They're all in caps. Big bold caps so I can see it. So it literally takes more time with the radio setup. Then it does put the plane together. Bam. Um, aircraft type wing is normal. We're going to put one aileron. One aileron, one flap for aircraft type. And you take it from there. All right. Um, this does come with the AR-631. Which is not a full range telemetry receiver. Um, it's the same one that comes in the Night Radian, Bind and Fly. But it does give you a voltage. You don't need a smart pack, but it gives you your overall flight pack voltage through the smart ESC, which I, I assume this might have. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and power it up and then put it into bind mode. Here, she's flashing. flap system put the flaps on switch D position zero let's go ahead and bring them flaps up bring them 
flaps up. All right. Right is right, left is left. Okay, so um, let me go back. We'll mess with the uh, flaps. But let me go back to the main screen. Yep, everything is neutral on the trim, so that looks good. So now we're going to flip it over and set the elevator neutral. Take care of that right out, right out of the gate. Very clean, neat looking plane. I like the way it looks. It's very clean. And woo, man, that is like way off by a country freaking mile on the elevator thing here. So good thing I didn't hook it up. It would add almost full down deflection. No bueno, senoro. No bueno. You know what, I might have to do a mechanical adjustment on that because it's, I don't want to thread that clevis so far out that it's barely hanging on by a half a thread. That wouldn't be good, would it? So let's go in there and back that sucker out. And... Oh, you know what, we can't. It doesn't have one of those types. So I guess we're gonna have to see what we can get. Surprise, that was a little short, but let's see what we get. I thought it was one of those ones where you can use your hex driver, but it's not. So let me see. Oh, I guess I still got quite a bit of thread left, so let's go. Okay, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Let's see. No, we still got a little more to go. You know what would be nice? I'm starting to see this on some of these newer planes. It would be nice if they gave you a finer thread on your push rods for your clevis adjustment so you can get just minute movements with a half a turn instead of, whoa, that's a little too much this way or that way. Okay, that's very neutral right there. Snap it in, everything looks good. Put the little keeper on. All right, elevator up, yep, down. Rudder right, rudder left, okay. So I do have to adjust mechanically the ailerons because they're a little bit off and then I can adjust the flaps once these ailerons are neutral to the wing. So then I can adjust, you know what? Here's something. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this has a Z-bend and it's on the outside and where the clevis connects to the control horn on the aileron, it's bending slightly where it's threaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it over to the inside so it's not putting a stressful bend on the clevis and then I'll adjust it from there. I like everything to be nice and straight. I don't like things kind of arcing and bending and being stressed that could potentially cause failure. And I don't like failure, man. I don't know about you cats, but I don't like failure. So let's take it out of the Z-bend from this side. And let's take it around to the other side. So that uh, we're not having to worry about that. And let's see, let's see what we got here before I do any twisting. Okay, looks like it just gotta have to go a half turn out. That's it. That should do the trick. You gotta be careful with these little. That did the trick. Half turn out. Okay, good. That looks good. Now let's go on to the other side. It looks like it's gotta go half to one turn in. Now that one looks good. It's on the outside and it looks good and straight. But that particular one, I didn't like the way it looked, so I just swapped it on to the inside. You can do that. So we're gonna go in one whole turn and see what that looks like. Okay. It was a little much, so we'll back off half turn. Come in a half turn. On. 
and that looks good right there. Now, I can go to my flap system. And now I can adjust my flaps in the up position to be neutral with the ailerons and nice and straight. And that looks good right there. Now, position one. Okay. We want 2% down elevator mix. Okay, so negative 2%. And then in full flap, let's give our flaps of about 40%. I'm eyeballing this, guys, because you know what? I could fine tune it from there. Well, you know, it's actually not negative, it's plus 2%. I am like not even seeing any movement. I'm not seeing any movement. <laughs> I'm like two and four percent, so we're gonna go a little bit more. And this is gonna sound like a lot, but I'm going ten and then fifteen because I didn't see any movement at all on the down elevator. So I can always, if I don't like what it's doing in the air with the flaps, I can always just land it without flaps and then, and then tone it down or up in either direction. So not too worried about that. So there it is unbox and build the only thing i gotta do now is just put the prop on guys and you know what because it went so fast stay with me let's get the prop on shall we I mean, geez, that was like stupid easy to do this so we're gonna see make sure i'm gripping on that okay i like to try to feel to see how everything engages there or put the nut on everything feels good and that must be mama's mama son's home because our dogs are going nuts All right, guys, I think I'm going to cut the video at this point, and we'll call it good. Deuces Wild, signing out. Thanks for tuning in with the unbox and build of the new E-Flight Bind and Fly RB7. Be looking forward for a maiden. Peace.